prepare playoff implications every game. And we are one game away from first place, and here comes the team that's going to bring it on tonight. At shortstop, it'll be number two. Here's the Sasquatch lineup, starting with Theo Hardy. Second baseman, number 23, Will Riley. Center field, number 28, Ben Parker. How about this right field, number 21, Charles McAdoo. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll ask you to please rise, remove hats, and honor America with us as we sing America's favorite song. And a special young lady leading us tonight, Rylan Olson. Well, it's just another night here in the fish for some Summer League baseball as the Spearfish Sasquatch hosting the Sioux Falls Sunfish for a two-game series. Games three and four of this seven-game homestand for the Sasquatch wrapping up this second half as they prepare for the end of this season. Coming down the stretch have now won Four games, three games in a row rather, and sit just one game back from the first spot in the Clark Division with the playoff spot hanging in the balance. Can they get it done? Well, we're going to find out here in these next two weeks as the Sunfish come in on a four-game losing streak. Now, remember, these two teams met at the end of the first half, started the second half, and the Sunfish got out to an absolute tear in the second half at one point had only they were six and one had a great season were tied for first for large part and then dropped a few games here and there and now sit at 13 and 10 in the second half starting to lose players like a lot of these teams in this league just can't keep up the same performance so they're three games back still a lot of time left they can turn around against the Sasquatch here two games like that next thing you know you're just a game back just like the Sasquatch where they were towards the bottom early on in the second half. But only a game back with 11 games left to go. Jace West is on the mound for the Sasquatch. He'll be the starting pitcher making his sixth appearance. As we take a look at your starting lineup for the Sasquatch here tonight. 
Theo Hardy will be leading off for Spearfish. Johnny McHenry getting the day off. So Hardy playing at short Will Riley. The Aussie from down under at second. Base Ben Parker, Charles McAdoo in their three and four hole spot. Seth Surratt batting fifth. Gage Ninnis in left field today. First time he's starting in left. He's in the eight hole spot. Matt Crossley at first base. Ryan Bachman at third. Leading off for the Sioux Falls, I'm sorry, for the Sioux Falls Sunfish, that's correct. It'll be Benito Garcia, the shortstop. He settles in. Facing Wessels. Wessels making his sixth start. First time pitching against the Sunfish this year. And first pitch inside for ball one. We are underway. Wessels from Columbia Basin College, 2-0 quickly to Garcia. 5.95 ERA, 0-0 record this year. He's pitched 22 in two-thirds Sasquatch, 4-1 when he starts. As Garcia finally takes strike one. Last start for Wessels came in that 7-6 doubleheader win against the Hastings Sodbusters back last Friday. Gave up four hits, four runs, but only one earned. Four walks to a strikeout as Garcia swings for strike two. Sasquatch this one loss since the All-Star break. That came against the Fremont move last Saturday in Fremont. Split that series one and one. On the last three, Two and two popped up high and shallow center. Ben Parker racing for it and makes the play for out number one. If we had yesterday's win, that ball would have easily dropped for a single coming into the ballpark. But right now the wind leaving the ballpark completely different than yesterday, coming out at about 16 miles per hour out of the north rather than the south. So we'll see. My guess, maybe one or two home runs here today. Yesterday, there was a few pitches that were hit where I thought for sure would have been home runs on a day like today, but instead were just routine fly balls. Temperature also at 91 degrees. Pretty sunny. It's been hot this week here in Spearfish. Yesterday, 104. It was the hottest recorded temperature in the United States yesterday for a major city as Wessels comes back in with strike one. Cool down to 91 here today. A little bit of a cold front possibly this weekend. Supposed to be only 84 tomorrow. One and two now to Mitch Stroh, the left fielder for the Sunfish. Stroh batting 233 this season from Elk River, Minnesota. One and two on the way, and Stroh just underneath that for a foul ball. Last time these two teams met back in in Sioux Falls, the Sasquatch took two out of three against them. One, one game, one and two, lost game three, and a bit of a blowout. One, two pitch, Stroh takes a ball two. Spearfish. Won the first game five to four, came back in the ninth inning. Actually, Ben Parker had a go-ahead single off the bench. Won the next game in a blowout, 19 to 14. And then Sioux Falls came back with a 10-5 victory in game three. Check swing, ball in the dirt, full count now. Went one for two in that second game. 3-2 pitch on the way and a swing and a miss. Strikeout number one for Jace Wessels. Now Norris McClure at the plate. The lefty third baseman. Long athletic frame. Six foot two freshman from Mandeville, Louisiana. Plays at Spring Hill College in Mobile, Alabama. Batting 310 this year. First pitch to left field, but this is fouled off. 
That ball carried a long ways out to left. So if anyone can get the barrel of the bat on a baseball here, look out. Owen too quickly to Norris McClure. Russell Setz delivers 0-2 pitch, popped up into left center. Gage Ennis running up and makes the play a 1-2-3 inning for Jace Wessels. It's the battle of the fish here in Spearfish, the Sunfish. And the Spearfish Sasquatch going at it, bottom of the first coming right up. Theo Hardy leading off for the Sasquatch. Logan Hunt on the mound for the Sunfish, making his first start of the season, second appearance. Just graduated high school a few weeks ago, committed to Central Arkansas as of now. First pitch a bit low for ball one. Theo Hardy back in this leadoff spot. Johnny McHenry getting the day off. Hardy's had a good week so far back in the fish. Four hits, seven at-bats. Pops up the 1-0 high into the infield. Third baseman calling for it and makes the grab for out number one. That's Norris McClure. That ball in the air for a minute. And the first batter retired. Now one down. So your lineup for the Sasquatch. Theo Hardy leading off. You got Will Riley batting second. Ben Parker third. McAdoo. Clean up steps right in the five hole. Matt Crossley batting six. Hayden Driggs in the seven hole. Then Gage Dennis and Ryan Bachman in the eight and nine hole. First pitch to Riley on the way. That's inside for ball one. Riley playing at second base today for the Sasquatch. Batting 297. He takes ball two. Was 0 for 5 yesterday, and four of his five outs were ground outs. Now 3 0 to Riley, including three right to the second baseman. Started off 0 and 3 with three straight ground balls to Cole Yancey, the second baseman for the Trappers. Takes strike one, 3 1 for Riley. 
playing in just his ninth game for the Sasquatch. Grad transfer to the University of Oregon. And there's ball for a five pitch walk. And Raleigh gets on base with one out. So one on, one down, Ben Parker at the plate. Was the leadoff hitter yesterday for the Sasquatch. Struggled in that spot, one for five with an RBI single. Had a couple of swings where he absolutely pieced the ball, but the wind, which was blowing dead into the box, killed anything high into the air. So a couple of pop-ups for Parker that in today's win definitely would have been a home run 60 miles per hour batting practice today for both teams looked like the home run derby and the pickoff attempt the first not in time with Riley over there defensively for the Sunfish Will Olsen behind home plate Steph Hoffpower at first Daniel Cricket Danielson at second Going back to first, might be in time. Ooh, close, the ball gets away from the first baseman. Riley's gonna hold up there though. Top power, thought he had Riley tagged out, but couldn't make the grab. He's inspecting his glove, looking for a hole. Norris McClure at third base. Benito Garcia at shortstop, Mitch Stroh in left. Tanner Wilson in center, Gannon Thompson in right. 3-0 to Parker after Theo Hardy retired on the second pitch. Logan Hunt in trouble of walking back-to-back -back batters. 3-0 count for Ben Parker. And he takes ball for back-to-back -back walks. Now two on for Charles McAdoo. So Charles McAdoo, the right fielder for the Sasquatch, two for four last night, a pair of RBI singles. He had three RBIs total, up to 60 on the year. That's a team high. First pitch on the way. And curveball just a bit outside. Olsen steps back, looking over at second base. Coach Mona back with the Sasquatch today after completing his two-game suspension. Ball in the dirt, but runners will stay. So 2-0. and oh. Facing his fourth batter, Logan Hunt is throwing just two strikes. Two and oh. And there's a strike right there, two and one. Fastball, the bottom outside corner. Seth's right on deck for the Sasquatch. Hunt looking over at Riley. Two and one. Throwing back to first. Parker gets back in time. Got to be careful with Will Olsen behind home plate. He's got a rocket of an arm. Hardy's had a few throws over the first tonight. That were close. Three and one to McAdoo. He takes strike two. Full count. McAdoo has been patient here in this at bat. Usually a very aggressive hitter. Full count. Runners on first and second with one out. And McAdoo takes ball. Four and bases loaded up here. Three straight walks for the Sasquatch. And here comes the Sunfish out real quick to talk with Logan Hunt. Just graduated high school about two months ago. Only one swing from the Sasquatch batters through their first four guys. That was Theo Hardy who popped up in the infield. But since then, very patient approaches has led to three straight walks.
So Seth Surrett now at the plate. Bases loaded up here for the Sasquatch. Came in today second in the league in base on balls. 20 behind this Canyon County Spuds. Added three more here in this first. As Surrett takes strike one. Good sign for the Sunfish. Logan Hunt able to get on the board with a strike early on in these at-bats. Been struggling with that so far in the first. Ball in the dirt. Good block by Olsen. One and one. Matt Crossy on deck for the Sasquatch. Scored in the first inning in their last three games. Trying to make it four here. And that pitch just misses outside for ball two. Also important to add that in those last three games, the Sasquatch are 3-0. They've been a good offensive team all year long, especially in the first inning. Always helps when you get on the board early. 2-1. and one. Surrett ground ball, the second double play opportunity, but it goes off the glove of Cricket. Danielson Riley will score. Parker will score. That's two runs on the board, and the Sasquatch take the lead early on. So an E4 allows two runs to the score. McAdoo safe at third, still only one out on this board. Matt Crossy now at the plate. Spearfish leading two to nothing early on. Runner going the second. Crossy reaches for it into the right field. The second baseman was heading towards second base. That's a single. McAdoo will score. And Spearfish now leads three to nothing. That was a late swing from Crossley. Might have been a hit and run. Surrett safe at third. So after an uh, infield pop-up, the last five guys have reached first base. Three walks in E4 in a single finally. And now with runners on the corners, Hayden Driggs at the plate, and he takes ball one. Sioux Falls already with pitcher in their bullpen warming up. I believe that is Tom Sun warming up for the Sunfish from Augustana University, hometown, Beijing, China. Drix takes ball two. Hunt's one and only pre appearance this year came against the Sabre Dogs. Pitched two and two thirds, only gave up one hit. Did walk four batters, gave up two runs in that game. Drix takes strike one, two and one now. Three runs, only one hit for Spearfish in this first. Still only one out on the board. A nice curveball in for strike two. Two and two now. As Driggs settles back into the box. Batting 307 this year for the Sasquatch. Two and two into right field. Thompson coming up. That ball will drop for a single. Here comes Surrett to the plate. And Hayden Driggs, another RBI. Single and it's four to nothing. So back to back RBI singles for the Sasquatch. And now Gage Ninnis at the plate. Seventh, I'm sorry, the eighth batter to hit here in this opening inning. So 
First pitch from Hunt to Nennis on the ground towards the shortstop. Garcia over the second for one. High throw the first, but the double play is turned. And that ends the first inning with a Sasquatch score. Four runs early as we'll turn to the second right here on the Sasquatch Network. Spark childhood imagination with innovative play mounds from Foreverlawn. These durable, long-lasting foam mounds add contour and creativity to any playground landscape, allowing kids to sit, jump, roll, slide, play, and more. Contact your local Forever Lawn dealer for details. Inning number two here in Spearfish. Well, Olsen takes ball one, the catcher at the plate. Sunfish find themselves down four to nothing early on here in tonight's ball game. Check swing, ball two now. One, two, three, first inning for Jace Wessels. Defensively for your Sasquatch, you got Matt Crossley over at first, Will Riley at second, Theo Hardy at shortstop, Ryan Bachman at third. Gage Dennis in left field, Ben Parker in center. Charles McAdoo in right. With Hayden Driggs catching tonight. Well, Olsen one pitch away from a walk. Instead, cranks one to the left center gap, going back to the wall. See you later. Lead off solo shot for Will Olsen and the Sunfish on the board. That win again blowing out of this ballpark. Any ball with some good contact on it gonna leave this ballpark. I have a feeling we're gonna see one or two more homers in this game. Now Tanner Wilson at the plate. That pitch, that home run, excuse me, came on a 3-0 pitch. Good execution there from the catcher. 2-0 now to Tanner Wilson. Center fielder from Lamar University. Freshman from Bridge City High School. Batting 361 this year. And just like the last at bat, Jace Wessels falls behind 3-0. So we saw what Will Olsen did on a 3-0 pitch. And instead of swinging, he just takes strike one. So 3 1 count. And another one. How about this? The sunfish going back to back. Will Olsen and then Tanner Wilson pull it back up. Back to back homers. And this lead cut in half.
So just like that, two straight home runs. And the Sunfish within four to two now. After a good start for Jace Wessels. Gives up. Home runs number five and six. And this one into the left field gap. Not going to be a home run, but going to be an extra base hit. Hoff power going the second. And the Sunfish, three straight hits, two homers, and now a double. Yeah, with this win tonight, folks, it's going to be a long game. It's going to be a lot of hits, a lot of runs as well. So tying run now gets Gannon Thompson here. Thompson, a six foot seven freshman. He has two homers this year. First pitch in the dirt. Hoff power the third, no throw from Driggs. And now he's just 90 feet away. So Jace Wessels had a great start. Now struggling here in this second. Three straight hits. The ladder on third base, still no outs here in this top half. Thompson takes strike one. Good pitch from Wessels, a slider on the outside corner. Now he sets for the one and one. On the ground, the Hardy diving for that ball gets through an RBI single. And now the tying run on first base. Four straight hits, and now Dane Frazier coming to the plate. Frazier batting 298 this season from Missoula, Montana. First pitch in the dirt, Driggs able to block it. So a leadoff home run from Willows, and followed by a home run from Tanner Wilson, then a double from Seth Hoffpower, and then Gannon Thompson, who's on first, an RBI single. And just like that, the Sunfish have responded with three runs, now trailing just by one to Spearfish. Thompson takes ball two. Last start for Jace Wessels pitched. Three innings in that one. That was in that double header to the Hastings. As Thompson lines, I'm sorry, Frazier lines won the third base. That's just foul. So two and one. First three starts, Wessels went four innings, four and two thirds. And two of those, four and a third in his third one. Then his fourth start, his longest outing, six innings. Only five runs given up. But here, three runs so far. Down two and one to Dane Frazier. Frazier takes ball three. Now a hitter's count for him. Sioux Falls has been taking advantage of Wessels when he gets behind in counts. What can Frazier do here? He takes ball four and now two on. And here comes Coach Mono out. This is
So Jace Wessel's in trouble here early on in the second. He's still no outs on the board. Runners on first and second. The first five batters have reached here. Top half of this inning. And now Daniel Cricket Danielson at the plate. Dylan Cricket Danielson, excuse me. Batting 121 this year. Nine hole hitter. Had that costly E4 in the first, allowed two runs to score. First pitch, big swing. He can get the suit, he can give Sioux Falls the lead for the first time here today, though, with one swing and a bat. Already had three extra base hits, two homers, a double in this inning, a single and a walk. Sasquatch bullpen not active yet. Now 0 2 the Cricket Danielson. One, two, three in the first for Jace Wessels, but still looking for his first out here in the second. Freshman from Clarkston, Washington. Going back to second, close, not in time though. Gannon Thompson over there. Will rally right behind second base, just to the right of it. Oh and two, ball in the dirt, good block by Driggs. Runners will stay at first and second. Benito Garcia on deck. He is the leadoff man in this Sunfish lineup. Looking back and forth to second. Now one, two, and this is popped up behind home plate. We'll stay at one and two. Wessels had a great year this past year at Columbia Basin College. A 7 and 1 record, a 3.80 ERA. And a 1 2 pitch on the ground, the third. This is fouled off, though. So we'll stay here at one ball and two strikes. Four runs in the first, the Sasquatch, Sunfish with three here, and it's not over with yet. One and two again. Here it comes, the Danielson. Lines one in the left field, and then it's a late jump. Coming up, that ball gets down. No throw, just will be a single. Runners will stay, and now the bases loaded up here for the Sunfish. When will Coach Mona go to the bullpen here? No one warming up yet. Five hits, one walk here in this second. Now the top of the order coming up. Tying run over at third. Go ahead, run on second. Garcia for one against Wessels in that first inning. And a first pitch strike. Garcia batting three, 248 this season from Arizona Western University. Leads the team in at-bats and games. 39 games so far, making his 40th appearance this year. 0-1 now, 0-2. Wessels just looking for an out here, any way he can get it. Base is still loaded, no outs here, top half of the second. Owen to the Garcia. Ball in the dirt, slider misses, drags another good block. So one and two now.
Cricket Danielson able to get a single. His last half, that off a one two count. Let's see what Garcia can do. Fly out the center field in the first. One and two. Fastball down low and count now two and two. Mitch Stroh on deck for the Sunfish. Norris McClure in the hole. The two and three guys in this lineup. Both are 0, and 0 for 2 against Wessels. 2-2 now to Garcia. Popped up high in the shallow center field. And Parker makes the grab. Thompson will tag, and we're tied up at four. Sack fly for Benito Garcia. Now Mitch Stroh at the plate. So finally the first out of the game, or the inning, excuse me, coming against the seventh batter Wessels faced here in this second. Now Mitch Stroh batting. Runners on first and second. First pitch low and away. Had one wild pitch so far here in this second inning. Number two for Jace Wessels this year. One zero in the dirt, two zero. Dane Frazier at second base. Cricket Danielson still on first. Wind still gusting out of this park towards the north. Two and one now. Good pitch from Wessels. Spearfish turned two double plays in last night's game. Will it be pretty clutch? If Wessels could reduce a ground ball here. This one sent to left field. This ball absolutely smoked in. That's gone. A three-run blast. And the Sunfish in front. Three homers in the second inning. And just like that, Sioux Falls in front. Seven to four. And still no movement in the Sasquatch bullpen. Base is now cleared. It's a seven run, six hit inning and it's not over with yet. So now Norris McClure, the ninth batter in this inning at the plate. for one against Wessels. Big swing there. Wessels came in the day with four home runs, giving up, has given up three here in the second with the way this wind is gusting. It's already a hitter's ballpark, but anything with that's barreled is gone as a high fly ball to left field. And then this is there, and now two down. And Will Olsen, who led off this inning with a homer, now back at the plate. Can he hit a second one? First pitch drops in for strike one. Olsen from Omaha. Nebraska plays at Augustana University in Sioux Falls, batting 347 this year. That leads the team. Pops up the 0-1 into right center. 
Charles McAdoo calls for it, and that does it. But six hits, seven runs, including three homers, have the Sunfish in front, seven to four, bottom of the second coming up. Well, back here in Spearfish, bottom of the second. If you miss anything, well, Sasquatch scored four in the first, and then Sioux Falls scored seven in the top half of the second. 7-4 ball game right now. Bachman takes ball to the nine-hole hitter leading off here in the second. Spearfish, two hits, three walks, four runs with three earned in that first inning. Bachman takes strike one, fastball on the outside edge. So two and one. And Bachman fouls off the two one, so two and two now. Hey kids, we'd love to trade foul balls with you tonight all night long. We'll give you an autograph baseball card. Bach batting 284 this season. Playing at third base today. Team leader in base on balls with 38. Two and two. Here comes Hunt with a pitch. Bachman in the right center. That's a base hit. Lead off single for Ryan Bachman. And now here comes Theo Hardy. Let off this game for the Sasquatch with an infield pop up. And the next six guys proceed to get on base after that pop-up for a double play into that first inning. So let's see how Hardy adjusts against Hunt. On a righty, Hardy a switch hitter, batting lefty here. Bachman on first, first pitch inside for ball one. So Sioux Falls has had a few guys warming up in their bullpen. Had Tom Sun in the first warming up. Now, a new face in the bullpen currently. 1 0 off the glove. Actually, called a foul ball off the very end of that bat of Theo Hardy. So, a 1 and 1.
Hardy batting at 312 this year, having an outstanding season with the Sasquatch. As Hunt throws back over the first. Sixteen extra base hits this season for the shortstop. One one inside, two and one, and it's gonna be said he was hit. So a single and HBP and now two on here. Well, we're going to have no shortage of base runners in this game. Now Will Olsen out to the mound to talk with Logan Hunt. As Will Riley, who walked in at first at the plate. So now Riley settles back into the box. Walked on five pitches versus Hunt at first, and he able to score off that E4. First pitch, a curveball a bit high and inside for ball one. Bachman on second. Hardy on first. 2-0 now. So Spearfish, three walks, one HBBS, four free bases. And all the Sunfish with six hits in that second inning. So both teams getting on base. No. Three no. Looks like Thompson in Thompson warming up the trappers or the sunfish, excuse me. With Andalo Santangelo also in the bullpen. Going back to second. No one is there. Bachman heading the third. Hardy the second. A huge miscue. And now two in scoring position. Miscommunication there between Logan Hunt and the shortstop Benito Garcia. Garcia pump fake to second. But Hunt thought he was going there, so turned around and threw it to him to try and pick off Ryan Boffin. But Garcia was already heading back to his spot in between second and third. The second error. And Will Raleigh takes one. Second batter hit. Now base is loaded up here for Ben Parker. So Ben Parker at the plate here. First pitch inside for ball one, nearly connects with Parker's left elbow. So a single and back-to-back -back hit batters have loaded the bases up for the Sasquatch here. Tying run at first, go-ahead run is Parker. 1-0 down low, good block by Olsen. Base is loaded, so no one moving anywhere. 2-0. Got to think that the Sunfish is going to 
go to the bullpen after this batter with three straight reaching. I don't think either manager was hoping to go to their bullpen this early in the game, but both pitchers struggling. 2-0, now turns to 3-0. And Parker one pitch away from walking for the second time tonight and bringing in a batter with him. Make this a two-run ball game. And three and one. That one pitch just catching the outside for strike one. Three one. Parker rips one the left field. That ball is foul. So full count now. Parker batting right at 400 this season. Leads this team in pretty much every category you can think of except for home runs and RBIs and walks. 3-2. Parker goes down, swinging a big strikeout for Logan Hunt. And Ben Parker, who was ahead 3-0, Goes down on three straight pitches. Now Charles McAdoo at the plate. Pitch way over the head for ball one. McAdoo with six. Triples eight home runs this year and leads the team with 70 RBIs. Takes ball two. Walked in the first against Logan Hunt. And here comes the head coach of the Sunfish, and this might be a pitching change here. And looks like it will be. We'll be right back. Bases loaded, one out for the Sasquatch, trailing by three. So Tom Sun gonna come in, replacing Logan Hunt after one and one thirds pitch, and quite a predicament that Tom Sun is in here. He got bases loaded behind two and zero. Oh. And oh, by the way, the batter is Charles McAdoo, who leads this team in triples in homers. One blown out of this ballpark. But after a single and back-to-back -back batters hit. Logan Hunt able to strike out Ben Parker, coming back from a 3-0 count. Big batter to strike out. 
And now Tom's son going to try and get McAdoo out. So count still 2-0 oh here for McAdoo. Bachman on third, Hardy on second, Riley on first. Logan Hunt, one on one third, three hits, five walks, and a strikeout. Now Tom Sun making his fifth appearance. Here's his first pitch to McAdoo. This ball popped up high in the foul ball territory. Norris McClure calling for it. Reaches back and makes the play. Wow, huge two outs for the Sunfish. Sasquatch missing a huge opportunity here. Their two best hitters. One goes down on a strikeout after leading 3-0, and then Charles McAdoo pops up in the infield, and now Seth Surrett at the plate. This could change the game. If Sioux Falls can get out of this second inning with no runs on the board after the Sasquatch loaded the bases with no outs. Now Surrett, he takes strike one. Tom Sonne, 6.13 ERA, is pitched in four games, seven to third so far this year. One and one record for Sioux Falls. Joining this team from Beijing, China. A one towards left field. Mitch Stroh is there in the Sasquatch. Leave the bases loaded after having no outs on the board. 7-4, Sioux Falls leads. Third inning here for the Sasquatch and the Sunfish. Jace Wessels back on the mound. Seven runs, six hits in that second inning. Meanwhile, the Sasquatch squander a huge opportunity. at bases loaded with no outs. Come away with zero runs. A strikeout to Ben Parker, a pop-up from Charles McAdoo and Seth Surrett. The fly out to left field. Spearfish still trailing seven to four. We'll see if we look back at that second inning. As Tanner Wilson in the right field. Fly ball. McAdoo's there for out number one. So Seth Hallpower would double in that second. At the plate. Hunter Runyon warming up for the Sasquatch. 
First pitch outside for ball one. Now ahead 2-0. And that's where Wessels got in trouble in that second inning. Gannon Thompson on deck. 2-0 pops up in foul ball territory. Matt Crossley over there towards first base. Falls backwards but makes the play for out number two. And now two down quickly here for Sioux Falls. And here comes Gannon Thompson. RBI single in his first at bat. First pitch down low for ball one. Thompson, six foot seven freshman at Michigan State University. Batting 242 this year from Sioux Falls, so playing summer ball right in his hometown. Leads this team with 28 walks. Lines on the left field. That ball right on the line called fair. Going for two. And Gannon Thompson now a pair of hits. Now Dane Frazier at the plate. He walked against Wessels in that second. These two teams, the history of highest scoring games. You look back at first series, 10 to five the last game, but 19 to 14 game two. We're on pace for one of those again here tonight, only in the third inning. First pitch in the center field. Ben Parker going back to the warning track and makes the play a big out number three. Two out double from Gannon Thompson, but the Sasquatch will head to the bottom of the third, still trailing by three. Well, if I told you the Sasquatch got a single and then back-to-back -back hit batters with no outs in the second, you probably would have thought they would have scored at least one run, but three straight outs, including two from Tom Sun as Crossley rips one to right field off the wall. Crossley going the second. Be a leadoff double. That ball a few feet away from going all the way. But Matt Crossley now two for two. 
And now Hayden Driggs at the plate. Driggs one for one here tonight, an RBI single in that first. Sasquatch with five runners left on base so far tonight. Meanwhile, Sioux Falls only one. Seven hits, seven runs. Spearfish four hits, four runs. Tricks takes ball one. Thompson came in that second inning with bases loaded, one out. Already behind in a 2-0 count to Charles McAdoo, but able to get the final two outs. But now with no outs, he's got Matt Crossley in scoring position at second. Want to know the Driggs. Fouls that one off. Now one and one. Driggs batting 307 this year from St. Mary's College. 1-1 one, one on the ground right towards the shortstop. Garcia has it over the first base in time for out number one. Crossy the third. And now Gage Dennis at the plate. Dennis into that double play at the end of the first inning with runners on first and second. Batting 333 this year from Newcastle, Oklahoma. We'll be transferring to McPherson College where Andrew Pratt, the hitting coach for the Sasquatch, is on their coaching staff. Was at Northern Oklahoma College this past year. 2-0 now to Nennis. One of the top JUCO schools in the U.S. Hit just below 300 this past year, 299. 2-0, big swing. 2-1 and one now. Cross over at third base, one out. Spearface trailing by three runs here. As Dennis right towards the second baseman. Here comes Crossley will score. Dennis out at first. And Spearfish pulls back within two. Two out now. So Ryan Bachman let off that second inning with a single in the right center. Back at the plate. Base is empty here. 7-5 ball game. First pitch in the right field. This is fouled off though. And out of play. Sasquatch have now scored five runs in their last 10 games. As Bachman takes ball one, one and one. Hunter Runyon still warming up for the Sasquatch. Can expect him to probably come out in this fourth inning. They'll have a two run deficit to work with. Bachman on the ground, the left side. Garcia diving for it, can't get to it. Ryan Bachman with his second hit of the night. The nine hole hitter rolling here tonight. And now Theo Hardy at the plate. Hardy hit by a pitch in that second. He's 0 for 1. Popped up in the infield in his first at bat against Logan Hunt. Hardy represents the tying run at the plate. First pitch drops inside for ball one. Hardy, a freshman 
at San Jose State University, according to his bio page, likes to destroy people in ping pong in his free time. Also pretty good at destroying the baseball. That one pumped out the left field but fouled off. So one and one for Hardy. Playing his 41st game for the Sasquatch, Tim Charles McAdoo. Good buddies. Both play for the Spartans as Hardy. Big swing on a breaking ball, one and two. He's wearing that protective mask over his face. Had a broken nose. That happened fielding ground balls in practice last Friday. One, two. Hardy cranks one to right field. Thompson running over to it. Can he get to it in time? No, sir. It'll be a single. Bachman holds up at third. And back-to-back -back hits off of Thompson. So third hit in this third inning. Two outs on the board. Will Riley now at the plate. Riley walked in his first at bat, or I'm sorry, first plate appearance and hit in his second. So, been on base twice tonight. 0 for 5 last night. Big swing there for strike one. Garcia playing a little bit closer to the second base. Dylan Cricket Danielson about halfway in between. Second and third, maybe a little bit more closer to second. Probably 0 1 down the third base line. That is just foul. That would have been a dangerous hit for Blue Riley if that stayed fair. Would have been tough to get to for anyone in this Sunfish outfield, but instead it's foul ball 0 2. One run across the board for the Sasquatch, trying to pull back within one run. Riley just fouls that one off to stay alive. Only two. Riley, a very patient hitter at the plate. Only three strikeouts in 37 at bats this season. Two walks, and has been hit by a pitch three times this year. 11 hits so far, all singles. Only two again. Riley takes ball one inside. Bachman on third, Hardy on first. Runners on the corners here with two outs. Sun checks over at Hardy on first. Now the livers up high, two and two. Sasquatch, no strangers to coming from behind. Two and two, and full count now. Trailed to the Trappers in that first game back on Monday a couple times before eventually winning 11 to 4. Also, we're trailing to the Fremont Moo 7 to 6 before coming back. Trailing 7 to 5 here. Full count, 3 2 pitch. Riley takes ball four, and base is now loaded up for Ben Parker. Riley, three plate appearances. Two walks and the HBP. So Ben Parker at the plate. Now the last time he batted, it was zero outs, bases loaded. Was ahead in that count, 3-0. Took strike one looking. First pitch drops in for strike one, then fouled off. The three and one, and then struck out swinging. That was the last batter Logan Hunt faced. Tom Sun came in, able to get the next two guys out. Inning ended. Can Parker get retribution here? One and one first. Next batter up, Charles McAdoo, if he could get to the play. It was the first batter Tom Sun faced. 
Parker walked in the first inning. 0 for 1 here tonight. 1-1 one, one pitch, 2-1 and one now. Wind still blowing out close to dead center. Maybe a little bit left to right action. 2-1. Parker rips one right towards the shortstop. Garcia is there, and that does it. Bases loaded again for the Sasquatch. Can't get anyone through. They do score one run. The Sioux Falls still leads 7-5. Fourth inning here, Sasquatch get one run across the board in the third, still trailing by two runs as Jace Wessel still working here in the fourth. First pitch popped up into right field. Charles McAdoo calling for it and makes the play for out number one. So after a rough second inning, Jace Wessel's calmed down a little bit here. Only one hit in his last six batters. But as I say that, the order making their way through for the third time, starting with Benito Garcia. 0 for 1, RBI sack fly in the second. Mitch Stroh is on deck. Had that three run homer in the second. First pitch strike in the Garcia. Hunter Ryan been warming up for the Sasquatch pretty consistently since the end of that second inning, but Coach Mona going to ride Jace Wessels for as long as he can. As Garcia goes opposite, this is in foul ball territory, 0-2 now. now. Sasquatch, about the bases loaded twice. Eight runners left stranded so far tonight. Two in the first, three in the last two. Including Ben Parker, who has been the team's best hitter all year. A strikeout and a lineout. 0-2, Garcia in the center field, that's a base hit. So the leadoff man with his first hit of the game. And now Mitch Stroh at the plate. Stroh one for two here tonight. Had that home run in the second. One strike out to Wessels. Got the better of him the last time around. Let's see what he can do with Garcia on first. One out. First pitch in the hands, up high for ball one. Stroh batting 2-33 this year. Two home runs now this season after the one in the second. Junior at Augustana University, located in Sioux Falls. He takes strike. Number one, Augustana shares the same ballpark with the Sunfish, so that's why so many of these guys on this roster play for the local Sioux Falls College. Hit 211 this past year for the Vikings. Two and one now. Yeah. 
Norris McClure on deck. He's 0 for 2 against Wessels. A pair of flyouts to left field. As Wessels goes back to first, but Garcia gets in time. Two balls, one strike, one out, one on. Stroh takes strike two, two and two. Sport athlete. Runner going to second. This one popped into shallow center field. I don't think it's going to get down in time. It does. So back to back singles for the Sunfish. So now Norris McClure steps in. Sioux Falls with nine hits. We're only in the fourth inning here tonight. Hardy playing right behind Garcia at shortstop, rally in between first and second. Pitch to McClure outside for ball one. McClure's hitting to just one double play this season. Batting 3-10. Now 2-0. Oh. Wilson on deck for the Sunfish. Had that home run off of Wessels in the second inning. McClure in the left field. This ball going to drop down fair. Here comes a runner around third. He'll hold up. Three straight singles off Wessels. And base is now loaded. That ball dropping down to no man's land. So Will Olsen at the plate leads this team in batting average, runs, doubles, triples, home runs, RBIs as the base is loaded. Wind is helping him here. Wessels three straight singles given up. Olsen takes one inside for ball one. Riley right behind second base. Olsen takes ball two. Garcia on third, Stroh on second, McClure on first. Now 3-0 to Will Olson. <laughs> 20 walks this year for the catcher. One more ball, and he'll bring in Garcia on third. 3-0 pitch, Olson pops one up high into left field. If this ball is fair, it could be gone. And it is a grand slam. The second home run for Will Olsen and the Sunfish pouring it on here in the fish. Four home runs given up for Jace Wessels here tonight. Sioux Falls taking advantage of this wind here at Black Hills Energy Stadium. And they lead now by six.
So Hunter running coming in for the Sasquatch here, but it might be too little, too late. Jace Wessels gives up four home runs, the latter to Will Olsen, his second home run of the night. And now you look back to those second and third inning, the Sasquatch left the bases loaded without any runs coming across. Now trail by six. We right back here in the Sasquatch Network. Sunfish leading 11 to five. The second Grand Slam in Sunfish history, both against the Sasquatch. The latter coming from Will Olson, his second home run in this game. It's 11 to five now. Sioux Falls putting it on the Sasquatch here tonight. Now Hunter Runyon on the mound. One and one now to Tanner Wilson. Olsen, one for two the other night, had that home run back in the second when Olsen and Wilson went back to back. Trying to do it again, but instead pops one up high in the center field. Let's see if anyone can get to it this time. Nope, no communication. Margo in the second, no one's there at second base. And the Sasquatch here really struggling in this fourth inning. That's the third infield, I'm sorry, third pop-up. That should be a routine fly ball, but instead drops down. No one getting to it in time. No one calling for it. And that will be a double. Four, I'm sorry, five straight hits for the Sunfish here in this fourth inning. Twelve hits tonight. An offensive explosion for Sioux Falls. Now Seth Hoffpower, the plate, he's one for two. He takes ball one. And now two and oh from Hunter Runyon. Making his 13th appearance this season, six time out of the bullpen. 4.62 ERA this year, three and two record on the bump. One inning in and out shy of reaching 50 this season. Two out running on the third. Driggs will not throw in a stolen base for Tanner Wilson. First one of the game for either team. Rio and Hoppower with a swing. So three and one. 
One out on the board. That was the first batter here in this fourth. The nine-hole man, Dylan Cricket Danielson, a fly out to right field, but then three straight singles, grand slam, then a double. Sioux Falls have doubled the hits with Sasquatch. As Seth Halpower thought it was ball four, threw his bat, instead has to come back in full count now. So full count, 3-2 pitch, and fouled off by Hoffpower. That was ball four, but instead jammed up inside on that swing. So count remains full here. Tanner Wilson on third, had that double and a stolen base on a pop-up, what appeared to be just a pop-up in the center field. 3-2 again. And half power comes around, fouls it off, that will stay at three and two. So Spearfish scored four in the first. Looked like they were on their way to their four straight victory, but 11 runs from the Sunfish in the second and fourth inning. Still not over with yet. In command, your three, two in the right field towards Matt Crossley. And he makes the play for out number two. So two down now. First batter retired by Hunter Runyon. And now Gannon Thompson at the plate. He's two for two here tonight. Double, a single, one RBI, and a run. Trying to bring home the runner on third base. First pitch fouled off behind. Home plate, so 0 and 1. Dane Fraser on deck for Sioux Falls. They can pull within two games tonight. They can hold off the Sasquatch and the Fremont Moo lose again. 0 1 well outside for ball one. Long ways to go here in this game still. But a six-run lead may be enough for the Sunfish. Bats have come alive tonight. 1-1, one, one. Thompson takes strike two. Fremont move ahead of the Sodbusters, 7-4. So this could be a two-game swing here. The Sasquatch's fall. They would drop the two games behind. It would be tied with the Sunfish. With just 11 games remaining. 1-2 pitch to Thompson. He takes ball two inside and low. So two balls, two strikes, two outs. Tanner Wilson on third. Five hits, five, five hits, four runs here in this fourth inning for Sioux Falls. Sasquatch with no defensive errors. But 12 hits will do it. Especially four home runs, 2-2 two, two fouled off. Four home runs is the most given up in a single game this year by the Sasquatch pitching staff. Two and two still. Runyon deals, Thompson ground ball to third. And we'll stay here at two and two. Good job by Thompson, you're hanging in this at bat. Runyon wrapping up this week with a Sasquatch before heading back to Montana, getting ready for the college season. Plays at Montana State University in Billings where head coach Jared Mona is on the coaching staff. Two and two again the top set. Check swing, that's ball three and full count now. Triggs asking the infield umpire if he went. Garrett Forsythe and Asa Drotti, the umpires here tonight for the Sasquatch Sunfish game. Long at bat here. Ken Thompson finished it off with a walk or a hit. 3-2 pitch on the way. Pops one up high in the right field. Crossley going back, but Raleigh calls for it, makes the play. 
And finally, this treacherous third, fourth inning ends for the Sasquatch defense. Will Olsen, his second home run, just happens to be the second grand slam in Sunfish history. Sioux Falls in front, 11 to 5, bottom half of the fourth coming up. Spark childhood imagination with innovative play mounds from Foreverlawn. These durable, long-lasting foam mounds add contour and creativity to any playground landscape, allowing kids to sit, jump, roll, slide, play, and more. Contact your local Foreverlawn dealer for details. Well, after pulling it back within two runs in the third, the Sasquatch now trail by six. Charles McAdoo first pitch, a short little grounder to Sun. Easy play over the first, and McAdoo's retired. McAdoo falls to 0 for 2 on the night. Sasquatch offense, six hits, five runs, four walks, two HBPs at trailing 11 to 5. Doesn't help. They've left eight runners on the bases stranded, including the bases loaded twice in the second and third inning. Of course, five runs through three innings, nothing to be ashamed of. It just hurts when your pitching gives up 11 runs and 12 hits. Steph Surratt, 0 for 2 here the night. Scored in the first after reaching on an E4. He takes strike one from Tom Sun. One and one. Ball in the dirt gets away from Olsen. Sun's pitch, two innings here tonight. Came in in that second inning with bases loaded, just one out. Able to retire McAdoo and Surrett to end that bases loaded threat. Gave up three hits just to run in the third inning. His second full inning in relief right here as Surrett pops up. One in the infield, going to come down somewhere in the stands. And it's just behind the Black Hill State University drumline team. It's college night here at Black Hills Energy Stadium. Local university has their band out here today. One two count for Surratt with one down. He sends one into right field. Thompson. Doesn't move at all. Now over to his right. Two down. Temperature down to 84 degrees. Feels lovely here. After reaching triple digits yesterday, was close to it today. 91 at first pitch. It was 97 on Monday. 104 yesterday. Now Matt Crossley, he's two for two here tonight. First pitch outside for ball one. Had that leadoff double against Sun in the third, able to score off Gage and Innes' RBI ground out. Second on this team in home runs. He pops one up high in the right field, Thompson. Drifting back, this one going to come down inside the ballpark, and it does. One, two, three inning for Tom Sun. 
Sunfish on cruise control as we head to the fifth inning. It's 11 to 5 here in Spearfish. Knee replacement? With the area's only Rosa robot, Monument Health offers a more personalized and precise procedure, customized for your anatomy. Get going with Monument Health, your partner for advanced orthopedic care. Fifth inning for the Sasquatch and Sunfish here. Hunter Round and Hunter Running, excuse me, his second inning on the mound facing Dane Frazier to kick off this fifth frame. Sioux Falls, seven runs in the second. They had six hits there, including three home runs and five hits, four runs in the fourth, courtesy of Will Olson. In front, 11 to 5. Dane Frazier over one of the walk tonight. Ahead 2 0 to Hunter Runyon. Gets Frazier to come around a big swing. Runyon came in the fourth inning, got the final two outs. And now starting the fifth for his first full inning. Coach Mona hoping. To only get maybe one or two innings out of Runyon, but didn't help that starting pitcher for the Sasquatch. Chase Wessels couldn't get through the fourth. Now three and one to Dane Frazier. Sioux Falls trying to tie the season series at two and two. Dane Frazier a leadoff walk, his second walk of the game. That brings up Dylan Cricket Danielson now to the plate. One for two here tonight, had a single in the second. Flat out to right field. In that fourth, let off that fourth inning actually. And five straight hits after that. First pitch popped up high in the center field. Ben Parker now maneuvering. And underneath it for out number one. Update in Hastings. The Fremont move avoid the sweep. Get back in the win column. Seven and five victory over the Sodbusters. So again, if the Sasquatch lose tonight, they will fall to two games behind the move. If Sioux Falls wins, they will also be two games back. Currently three right now. So this is a 
big battle here between these two teams. Juanito Garcia takes strike one. He's one for two tonight. RBI sack fly in the second, a single in the fourth. Playoff race, second half, really down to just three teams. The Moo, the Sasquatch, and the Sunfish. As Garcia in the shallow center field. Parker coming up. He makes the play for out number two. Pioneers already clinched that first half spot. They're 11 and 10 in the second half, four games back, but already clinched. Meanwhile, we're in the Clueless Division, the Sabre Dogs, who will be here on Friday for a three game series. They're still in first place. But the second half playoff spot going to come down to the Big Sticks, who are one game back, currently in front. They're on a five game win streak, but the Canyon County Spuds, seven games in a row. They have one. They're two and a half back. Only one and a half really from the big sticks. And the Tommy Knockers are on a three game losing streak. They are three games back. Two from the big sticks. So it should be a very tight battle for the playoff spots in both these divisions. Sears Valley with Clinton in the first half. Still on the same old roll, four game win streak, seven and three in their last 10. Strike two in to Mitch Stroh. Hayden Driggs came out on the mound for a lengthy mound visit with Hunter Runyon. O2 pitch in the right field. This ball will get down for a base hit. Frazier to third. Here's the throw from McAdoo. Won't be in time. So now runners on the corner is a two out single from Mitch Stroh. He's now three for four. And that's like the third or fourth ball we've seen that's been just a flare. Sue Falls doing a great job getting on base here tonight. 13 hits now. Seven more. Then the Sasquatch. Now Norris McClure at the plate. Three-hole hitter for Sioux Falls. One for three here tonight. First time facing Runyon. Had a single in the fourth thing. That was a little pop-up to left field. That no one could get to in time. First pitch low and away for ball one. Three straight hits. Lower the bases up for Sioux Falls. And then Will Olsen, who's on deck, absolutely blasted one in the left field. 1-0 popped up high to the infield. Crossley now drifting over in foul ball territory, leans back and makes the play. Two left on with the Sunfish still in control. They lead by six, bottom half of the fifth coming up.
Sasquatch need runs, they need them fast. Trailing by six, running out of time here. Black Hills Energy Stadium. Levin's five lead for Sioux Falls. Hayden Drick to the plate. One for two here tonight. RBI single in the first. Ground out in the second. Two and zero oh for Hayden Driggs now. Tom Sun on the mound here. He's pitched two and two thirds here tonight, having a good outing. Just one run given up as Driggs pops up. Oh, this is behind home plate. Going to come down somewhere on our roof. Actually, just gave one of our PA guys a heart attack. So 2-1. Gage Dennis and Ryan Bachman also do up here. Trick takes ball three. Sasquatch, no strangers to putting together high run innings. They had six runs against the Trappers back on Monday. That came in the sixth inning. Drawn by six now as Drix comes around for strike two, three and one. That's a <laughs> but can they do it here against Sioux Falls, one of the best teams in this league? Three, two count. Payoff pitch on the way to Drix, and he takes ball four. That was a good pitch from Tom Sun. Just misses outside. Good take for Hayden Driggs. So lead off walk. Gage Dennis 0 for 2 here tonight. Pair of ground outs. One was a double play. That end of that first inning. Sasquatch led 4 nothing. Who knew they would be trailing by six later on in this game, but that's summer ball for you. First pitch from Sun in for strike one. And it's batting 333 coming into today's game. 883 OPS for the Sasquatch. Playing his 13th game out in left field tonight. First time playing in left this season. Slider outside, low and away for ball one. Ryan Bachman on deck. He's been hot tonight, two for two, including a single off Tom Sun in the third. In the left field, that ball is just foul, one and one. Now one and two. Dennis came out of high school as the eighth ranked shortstop in Oklahoma for perfect game. 40th ranked overall in the Sooner State. Takes ball two there. Two and two now, the Sasquatch. Six hits here tonight. Five runs, but eight runners left stranded, including the bases loaded twice. Sun looking over the first base. Two and two. And full count now. Back to back sliders misses outside. And then this with seven RBIs this year, four doubles, 13 hits. Full count, three, two pitch into the right field. That's a base hit. So a walk and a single here in the bottom of the fifth. And Gage Zinnis, 13 games. He has a hit in every single one so far this season. We got a couple of base runners to bring in. This guy's going to do it. He's a singer. Matt Cain on State Park Ranch School all the way from So Ryan Bachman, two for two here tonight, a pair of singles. Sasquatch trying to cut into this league a little bit.
No outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Driggs on second, Ennis on first. First pitch in for strike one to Ryan Bachman. Who has a great story. You probably heard me tell it multiple times this year on air, but always bears repeating from Rapid City. 45 minutes away here. Was just signed to a 10-day contract with the Sasquatch, the temporary player. But Coach Mono was so impressed by what Bachman showed. Ball in the dirt, Drix will hold up at second. And actually, Coach Mono asked him, would you say the full season? I think Bachman said yes before Mono could finish the sentence. And has been a phenomenal player defensively as well as offensively. 284 batting average coming in tonight. Two for two here tonight. Trying to make that three for three. Kind of a half swing there from Bachman. Did go around anyway, one and two now. Has 10 extra base hits. Had two home runs, both keeping that first week, actually. Hasn't hit one since. Wind's still blowing out of this ballpark, though. One, two pitch. Bachman chases, go down, swinging. First strikeout for Thompson. And that brings up Theo Hardy now. Hardy one for two here tonight, had a single in the third inning. Hit by a pitch in the second, has been left stranded on second base twice tonight. Popped up in the infield in that first inning. Two on for the Sasquatch. Check swing from Hardy, but that's in for strike one. Hardy hasn't seen too much action over at shortstop tonight. Usually scorebooks filled up with a bunch of six threes. Some of those, most of those not routine for Hardy. That was one of the highest fielding percentages for a shortstop in this expedition league. Didn't play too much this past season at San Jose State University. 30 at bats total, 233 batting average. He takes ball two. Did have a 957 fielding percentage this past year. 11 double plays turned, two errors, 27 assists, and 17 putouts. But having a phenomenal summer here, batting above 300 as well, an all star in this league. 2 1 pitch, check swing, 2 and 2 now. Two on, one down for the Sasquatch here. Bottom of the fifth, trailing by six runs. Tom Sun looking back over at Hayden Driggs. Now fires away. And Hardy pops that one foul behind home plate. So we'll stay right here at two and two. Will Riley on deck for the Sasquatch. Been on base all three times, but no hits. A pair of walks and a HBP in this one. Two two pitch, Hardy ground ball to first. On the back for one over the second base, the throw low, Garcia did not get him in time. Nennis will be safe. Sunfish add one out. So two down here, runners just move over a base and that brings up Will Riley. Son went one, two, three in his last inning. A walk and a single to open up this fifth, but retired the last two batters, trying to finish it off here against Will Riley. And first pitch high and away for ball one. Riley batting just below 300 this year at 297, but three walks, three 
HBPs. He has more, as many walks as strikeouts and been hit by a pitch more times than a strikeout. Ground ball to first, broken back, gets through the legs of Hoffpower. Driggs will score, Ninnis will score, Raleigh to second. And the Sasquatch add two more runs. That'll be the third error of the game for the Sunfish. That will cost them two runs, and the lead cut the four. So Ben Parker is 0 for 2 with a walk here tonight. Has Riley on second after that E3. Parker takes one inside for ball one. I think if you were presented with a bases loaded situation and said, I need one hitter to get me a hit with those bases juiced, who would you pick on the Sasquatch team? I think. At least one of your answers would be either Ben Parker or Charles McAdoo. And Ben Parker came to the plate with bases loaded, but a strikeout and a lineout just uncharacteristic from one of the league's best hitters this year. But he takes strike one, so one and one. Walked in the first, able to score off Matt Crossley's RBI. Sun looking over the second. Parker takes. A ball. So two one count for Parker. Ball in the dirt. Also able to block it. Probably holds up at second anyway. So three one count. Parker came out of that Sod Busters doubleheader game on Friday, batting 421. But since then, has struggled. Went 0 for 6 against the Fremont Moo. Didn't play on Monday. 0 1 for 5 yesterday, and right now, 0 for 2. I can tell you right now that Ben Parker's not going to go out hitting like this, though. One of the most competitive players I know on the Sasquatch team. So right now, Will Olsen talking with someone on the Sunfish team. Just getting some water from JT Mix. Might be, might have hurt himself just a little bit off that block. Not sure. Did prevent Will Riley from getting the third base. Now he crouches back down. Three and one count to Ben Parker. Runner on second, two outs. Parker takes ball, four, five pitch walk. That brings up Charles McAdoo now. So Ben Parker, 0 for 2, but a pair of walks here tonight. Spearfish with six walks. Six walks, seven hits. And throwing two hit batters. So Charles McAdoo, 0 for 2 here tonight. Walked in the first, popped out last two at bats. First pitch of slider, man. Will Olsen doing a good job there. Easily could have been a pass ball. Keeps it 1-0, though. one and 0 count for Tom Sun. Sioux Falls keeping their bullpen quiet. Ball two in the dirt. Mm -hmm. 
McAdoo went six for 13 in that series back in Sioux Falls, including a four for five night where he had three doubles and a single. 2-0 pitch, now 3-0. So McAdoo gets on base here with a walk. Seth Surratt would come up to the plate. Also be the fourth time tonight the Sasquatch would have the bases loaded. Three-oh count for McAdoo. Take strike one. I have two unconventional pop-ups. One in the second with bases loaded. Three one count. Sun delivers. McAdoo takes ball four and base is now loaded up again for the Sasquatch. So back to back walks. Sioux Falls now getting some movement in their bullpen. Here comes a quick little mound meeting. We'll be right back. Base is loaded up. Two outs. Can the Sasquatch get a base hit? So Thompson in a bases loaded jam for the third time tonight. Able to get out of it successfully the first two times. Well, third time be the charm for the Sasquatch as Surrett takes strike one. That's a good way to start for Sun. Bases loaded up here with two outs. A walk a single to open up this fifth, and Will Riley reached on the E3 scoring Gage Dennis and Hayden Driggs, then Ben Parker walked, and Charles McAdoo also followed the walk as Surrett takes ball one. Tie and run at the plate. Seth Surrett has a history of home runs in this ballpark. He has three this year, 10 doubles, a triple. Wind blown out of this ballpark right now. Already had four home runs, but all four from Sioux Falls. 1-1 pitch inside. Surratt might have been hit. Riley will hold up at third. I think Surratt able to dodge it. Good job by Will Olson able to get to it in time. It, it might have bounced up and hit Surratt. Either way, 2-1 count. Hayden Driggs and Will Olson putting on an exhibition tonight, showing how to prevent wild pitches. 2-1 count. So right on the ground, the first base, making the play, Seth Hoffpower. Sasquatch leave the bases loaded for the third time tonight. Rinse and repeat. Six inning coming up. Sioux Falls in front by four.
Back here in Spearfish, the sun setting over the Black Hills. Give you a quick update around the Expedition League here on this Wednesday night in July. As we come down the stretch here, the playoff spot I mentioned earlier was Fremont Moo, a 7-5 victory over the Hastings Sodbusters. So they will be bare minimum a game in front, possibly two of this score holds here in Spearfish. Meanwhile, in the Clark Division, the Pier Trappers leading the Pioneers 13-8. Piers lost two games in a row to the Sasquatch. And over in the Lewis Division, Tommy Knocker's Big Six with a big game to the two, the top of the tenth right now. Playoff spot being fought for there. And then Sabre Dogs, a 10-4 victory over the Whiskey Jacks, four games in a row for them. And then the Spuds and the Horseheads, five to six, Casper leading. Spuds on a seven game win streak, that's in jeopardy. Sebastian Munoz on the mound for the Sasquatch, his third appearance this year. Hunter Ryan's only gonna pitch one and two thirds. First pitch, a bit high for ball one. And here comes Hayden Driggs out on the mound. Maybe just going over pitch signs. Munoz two games, four and two thirds pitch, a 5.78 ERA. His first outing for the Sasquatch went three innings, gave up just one earned run, but had a tough one against the Fremont Moo. One and two thirds, gave up a pair of hits, three walks. Fremont will get four runs across the board in that one. And as Will Olson, having an okay night with Sioux Falls. I don't know, two homers, grand slam, five RBIs, two runs, whatever. He takes strike one. OPS this year is 1.160. I thought Ben Parker's OPS was good. Well, also having a phenomenal year. Plays at Akasana University, Sioux Falls, from Omaha, Nebraska. Two and one now from Munoz. It's a third team All American this past year. First team All Region. 342 batting average. Had 15 home runs this past year, a 729 slugging percentage. Okay. And throw a 10 runner trying to steal. 3 and 1 for Munoz. I'll keep an eye here. Munoz with three walks in that last outing against Sioux Falls. Averages about 7.7 .7 walks per nine innings. Trying to avoid walking the leadoff man, Will Olsen here in the sixth. Olsen cranks one to left field, but this ball is foul. Just a bit in front of that, he knows it too. Play the Nebraska Kearney before coming to Augustana. The Lopers. 3-2 pitch from Munoz. Olsen fouls that one off. We'll stay here at three years at August and he's batted above 300 his worst batting average there 330 three and goes down swinging opening strikeout for Sebastian Munoz good job battling back there now one down for Tanner Wilson Wilson two for three of the night. Pair of extra base hits, a double home run. Take strike one, his double came on what appeared to just be a pop up the center field. Had four Sasquatch defenders scrambling for it. Dropped down right in front of Ben Parker and Charles McAdoo. Solo base got the third, but Hunter running able to get the final two outs before Wilson could score. 
0 and 2 now. Dirty pitch from Munoz. So Sebastian Munoz's addition to the team begs the question, who has the best hair now? For a while it was Riley Moran, but now the Sebastian Munoz changed that. 0-2, oh, it went line the center field. That ball will get down for a base hit. And Tanner Wilson's now three for four here tonight. Our intern, Jack Banks, says Munoz does not have the best here on the team. Neither does our assistant GM. Jack, who does have the best here on the team then if it's not Sebastian Munoz? Wow, he just said Cameron Parker. Interesting. 1-0 now to Seth Hoffauer. I mean, it has to be either Munoz or Moran. We're going to second. Munoz didn't know it. Drake's going to throw. Late throw, though. So half power in the second easily. That's the second stolen base of the game. I'm sorry, Wilson in the second easily. They're two for two. Sioux Falls, one of the league leaders in stolen bases, actually stole home against the Sasquatch. Back at Karras Park. Two and one now to half power. So Wilson now in scoring position. He got the third last time without being scored. Two and one inside, three and one. Hitters count now for Hoffbauer. Gannon Thompson on deck. Single and a double tonight. So everyone on the Sunfish lineup has been on base tonight. Either a walk or a hit. Hot power check swing, that's ball four. Now runners on first and second. Righty first righty here. Wilson on second, hot power on first. Thompson a single, a double. Going to pop up the second. That was in shallow right field to end that fourth inning. Spearfish back within four. Have other bases loaded three times tonight. On the ground right towards Munoz. Going to go the second for one. I throw back to first in time. Munoz turns the double play. Bottom of the six coming up. Sasquatch trailing by four.
Back here in the Black Hills, Sasquatch trailing by 411 to 4, bottom of the six. Declan Beers on the mound for the Sunfish, making his debut on the mound. Matt Crossley batting, and we got Johnny McHenry up here in the booth. Johnny, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. First pitch outside. Have you ever pitched in the game yet? Pitched? Yeah. No. I have not pitched probably since I was 13 years old in the game. Crossley Ooh. absolutely shreds one the left field, but oh, Micah Stroh can't get to it in time. Lead off single for Matt Crossley. I'm not going to lie, I thought that was caught off with that. I thought it was too. Been a lot of weird hits here tonight. A lot of pop yeah. ups that I thought for sure outs, and a lot of. Yeah, a lot of bloopers with this wind. It's kind of tough to, like, because as an infielder, you think it's shallow, but then it just keeps carrying. And then as an outfielder, I mean, you're trying to play deep to play the wind, and then it just kind of falls in between. Hayden Driggs, one for two, a walk tonight. Let off the fifth inning with a walk against Tom Sun. Able to score off Will Raleigh's E3. So Crossley on first here. Sasquatch trailing by four runs, and the Sunfish, who are just depleted on pitchers, have a guy who hasn't pitched at all this year. But throwing strikes, one and one. We've had a few two-way guys pitch this year. We had Ryan Bachman pitch, yep. RJ Galvin, Ray Lozano. Kate Stuff's been warming up a few times, hasn't pitched yet. What have you seen from Kate Stuff? Or what's his pitching scouting report? Do you know anything about him? Well, obviously he's a fastball. Really? Um, <laughs> no he way. actually has a very good little, like, two-seam slash sinker. And uh, I think that would be a strikeout pitch. That's his go-to strikeout pitch. Driggs pops one up in foul ball territory. I know. I play catch with Seth a lot. Seth likes to show me some of his pitches. <laughs> Seth's got a pretty dirty changeup. Seth also has a fastball. Theo Hardy pitched his last year actually for San Jose State. I was told he throws in the upper 80s. Yeah, on the roster they technically have him listed as a uh, infielder slash pitcher. I asked him if he was going to pitch this year. He said no way. <laughs> I think Coach Mono wants to keep him at shortstop. Yeah, that's probably a good choice. What do you think of his uh, his mask he's wearing? I mean, it doesn't seem to bother him too much. Um, but yeah, it's, I. I think that that would bother me a little bit. Kind of seems like it gets in the way a little bit. Driggs check swing did not go. He got his splint taken off today, actually, so he doesn't have that little nose piece on anymore. So just the mask yeah, cover just up. Just the mask, because if he takes another blow like that. Now you play in the infield, of course. Have you ever taken a ground ball to the nose? I'm sure you have, but has it you ever broke anything? I've never taken a ground ball off the nose. Driggs pops um, up in the right center. I have taken a ball off of the like my bottom jaw though. That's fun. Yeah, a little pickoff move to third, and I wasn't really looking because I thought he was gonna pitch. Just drilled me right in the face. <laughs> Good throw though. Is that back in Saragossa? No, that was like in Little League. Ah. Uh -huh. Still have a scar in my lip from it. Well, Drake is retired, so one down, one on. Gage Dennis at the plate. One for three here tonight. He has a hit in every single game he's played so far this season. First pitch in the foul ball territory out of play, however. Yeah, I was watching when that ball hit Theo, and, like, it it sounded bad. It sounded, like, like off the, just from the sound alone, I had a pretty good feeling that he broke something just because that's how loud it was. Second time here at Spearfish, a player has had their nose hit by a ground ball. In warm-ups, if you remember Owen Bischoff for the Spuds, I oh believe. Yeah, High right. school teammates with Hunter Runyon took one. Supposed to be his, actually his debut. Takes one to the nose. Nose starts bleeding profusely. Yeah. yeah, Theo lost a lot of blood, too. That was just one stop. Two and one here, the Ninnis. And then that same day, actually, when Theo got hit, when... I forgot what team we were playing that day, but their second baseman took one off the face. Or no, Will did. Will, Riley, took one off the That's face. That's right. MVP. That was his first that day, right? Day, yeah. Two and two now. 
Ryan Bachman on deck. And then this takes ball three. So you, your offense, no trouble getting on base tonight. You got eight hits, seven walks, two times been hit by a pitch, but still trailing by loaded. four. Menace just fouls one off. Yeah, leaving the bases loaded with no outs uh, puts a kind of dent in things. Don't like to do that very often. Three times this game. And surprisingly, it's happened with some of your best hitters at the plate. Yeah. 3-2 count. Nettis in the right center. That's going to get down for a base hit. Crossley going for third. Late throw from Thompson. Now going to second. Nettis diving Thanks. in. He is out. A costly throw out. And is trying to go for two. So two down now here in this sixth inning. Wipes away. That hit from Minnesota to Ryan Bachman. Runner on third. So Bach, two for three here tonight. First time facing Beers, of course. Takes the pitch up top for ball one. Just a lot of frustrating plays tonight for the Sasquatch, it seems like. Yeah, there's been a few. And Bachman takes ball two. So 2-0 and count. And 3-0, Bachman takes one inside. Have you been enjoying the 100 degree heat here this past week? I'm, I know you're used to it. Yeah, no, this is a s still a cool off technically, but um, yeah, yesterday and today have been pretty hot. Bachman, the eighth Sasquatch batter to be walked tonight. He now has 39 this season. And Theo Hardy at the plate. So Hardy in this leadoff spot, where normally you are, Johnny. One for three of the night, and a single hit by a pitch in the second. Got runners on the corners here. So let me ask you, as a hitter, you're facing a guy on the mound who hasn't pitched all year. Does your approach to the plate change at all? Well, it kind of depends. Like, if he's a position guy, um, which I don't know if he is, do you know? Is he a position player? Yes. Pitching? Yes. So since he's a position guy, you kind of he's probably not going to throw you an off-speed pitch because either he doesn't really have one or it's just not good. But um, so yeah, facing position guys, you're kind of just looking for the fastball and kind of looking for it in your zone too because you know it's, you know it's going to be there at some point because obviously they don't practice hitting locations. It shows that Northern Iowa Community College did not pitch at all during those three years there, transferring to Augustana this next year. Ball in the dirt. Bachman holds up that first, but throw a guy for a guy who hasn't thrown in who knows how long as a pitcher, he looks very comfortable on the mound. He's not throwing 70 out there. Yeah, that was the thing. Uh, that's kind of what gets guys, actually, though, when those position guys come up and they just kind of, like, lob the ball in there, guys get off balance and stuff. 2-1, Hardy rips one foul. It's kind of funny to watch those MLB position players throw, throwing, like, 45 miles an hour, going three up, three down sometimes. I remember the, the player came in and was throwing through 40 miles per hour. I'm trying to remember his name off the top of my head. But he was able to get three outs. 2-2 two, two count. Already checked swing, full count now. Being told by our assistant GM that Sioux Falls had seven pitchers leave this week, including their 
Yeah, you don't want seven. Oh, there you go. That's a base hit for Hardy. Crossy will score Bachman oh, the third. Now Hardy going the second. Yeah, the throw, not in time. That's a double. Yeah, that make your he, uh, heart a little jittery when you see a guy turn for second off? No, not with Theo's speed. Theo's there. Hustle doubles are very fun. I enjoy trying to stretch a single. You have a few of those double. this year. Yeah. He, uh, yeah, no. Theo's one of those guys you can trust doing something like that. So Especially with Theo's just like baseball IQ. He's one of the smartest players I've ever played with. He knows what he's doing out there. 17 extra base hits this year. He's a phenomenal infielder. 12 doubles now after that one. Well, Riley takes first pitch strike. Now you play with Riley for about two weeks now. Great contact hitter. What have you seen from the Aussie so far? Yeah, he's just a solid guy all around. He's a great guy too, like uh, personality wise. Good defense. He's not going to get beat, and he's definitely not going to get beat um, hitting either. He's one of the toughest outs I've ever watched. He's a he'll very get, patient batter. Yeah, he'll get deep in the count, and then two strikes, it doesn't even matter. I believe he has two strikeouts this year because he, he's been hit by pitches more than he has struck out. Oh, for one of the night. Two walks, HBP, and just chops that one foul. So 2-2 two, two count. Bachman on third, Hardy on second. It's always exciting, too, with uh, Will being committed to Oregon. Like You always like to see kind of how those guys play, yeah. just different approaches to the game and stuff. I noticed that even with like Theo and Charles, they just approach the game differently. Probably takes ball three. I'm sure it's great for someone like you at a, at a Juco, young in your baseball career, trying to look at other guys who are D1 and, and try and get better. Yeah, um, always trying to learn from other guys and stuff. Up the middle, Garcia fills it over the first base in time. Sasquatch leave two strand to get one across the board, cutting the lead down the three. Final three innings coming up. We got Johnny McHenry in the booth. Don't go anywhere.
Top of the seventh here in Spearfish. Sasquatch clawing back here, back to a three-run lead. Sebastian Munoz on the mound. He's facing Dane Frazier, first pitch strike. Now, we had a conversation earlier about best hair on the team. <laughs> Who's your vote? Um, well, uh, with Seba adding Sebastian, that makes it tough, but I still think Moran's got the Moran. uh, title on that one. So top two, Moran, Munoz, who's number three? Um, let's see. It's, like a, it's a big drop off, right? Yeah. Me and Riley have similar haircuts. So I guess me and him are at number <laughs> three. T3? Although on 4th of July, my mullet was the one that got posted instead of Moran's. Mm, so I'm not saying anything, but I'm just saying. 0-2 to Dane Frazier. He takes ball one. Frazier 0 for 1, a pair of walks here tonight. Actually responsible for the two Sioux Falls based on balls. Actually, I'm sorry, incorrect. There's been three walks. He has two of them. One and two for Munoz. On the ground to third base. Bachman high hop, fills it over the first. Got him. For out number one. Bachman's played shortstop. He's played second base. He's played third base this year. He's played pitcher. He's played pitcher. <laughs> He's been pretty much everywhere. And, and same with you. You played third, second, and, and short. Still waiting on the call for pitching. I tell Kentrell every day. And what does Kentrell say back to you? He just laughs in my face. First pitch strike to Dylan Cricket Danielson. Now, of course, Coach Ryan Kentrell at Saracosa. Coach Jeremiah Johnson at Saracosa. Johnny McHenry, you're at Saracosa. What's the experience like coming here for summer ball but having two of your coaches? Even though Kentrell is technically a pitching coach, but yeah. you still have worked with him, I'm guessing, over the last couple of years. Yeah, so... We all have really good relationships with each other. Um, obviously, you know JJ. He's one of like, <laughs> the easiest guys to get along with. Um, just kind of cracks jokes all day. And then I was able to do some of the driveline program with Cantrell, um, just to get my arm like healthier and stronger. So I was able to build my relationship with him through that, and so we connected a lot through that. And obviously, this summer we've been able to just kind of hang out, lift together, and hang out in the dugout all day together. So we've been having a good time this summer. And you also just had your teammate and close friend Michael Dorr join you. Dorr made his debut yesterday, played a half inning. Yeah. And Danielson pops one up into right field. McAdoo racing back to the warning track and underneath it for out number two. Yeah, um, it's good to have Michael here. He's a great ball player. Um, I've known him since about second grade. Both from Spanish Springs High School, right? In Sparks, Nevada? Yep. Two down. I heard a story from Coach JJ that, and talked to Michael yesterday too, that he, he played this past year with torn labrum, broken collarbone, strained groin. Torn hamstring. Torn hamstring. Still batted 433? Yeah, that's right. He, uh, he tore it up this year. Um, but yeah, he was. Probably the most injury-prone player this year that I've <laughs> ever seen. Tears his labrum in the fall. Finally gets back healthy from that. Well, healthy-ish. Healthy-ish. So, uh, of course, naturally, we decided to go play football. <laughs> um, I throw a pass. It was a great pass. It was a fade pass. Garcia uh, showing butt here. This just turns foul. Yeah, a little fade route. Perfect pass. He had to lay out for it, though. And then I saw he got injured on the dive, and I thought he retore his labrum. <laughs> Turns out he breaks his collarbone. Wait, is it a perfect pass if he's diving for it, though? I, we had to beat the defense, you know. We ah, had to beat okay. the defense. It was, a, it was a good play both ways. Um, yeah, so breaks his collarbone from that. Then he has to recover throughout winter break. And then he's feeling good. He's finally, like, healthy enough to go practice again. So he's pretty amped to do that. So amped that he sprints out of the box in a little hitting drill that we're doing. Sprints out of the box and then tears his hamstring on the first time sprinting. Oh, man. 
Gets okay. back healthy from that. Te re tears his hamstring again. Just trying to put too much stress on it. And then he tore his groin. So it was, it was a wild ride for Michael this year. But obviously, I mean, something was clicking for him because yeah. he was, yeah, multi hit game every single game almost. So it's pretty impressive to watch. Any injuries since he got here yet? <laughs> I mean, yeah, he has actually. He, um, we were hitting in the cage yesterday, and he oh no. reopened a blister, so he was bleeding out of his hand. Oh, I yesterday. saw his hands from batting practice because he hadn't he hasn't hit in so long. Yeah, so he he just got done with his summer league that he was playing in about a month ago, and then kind of he decided it was good to take a break since his body was feeling it. So he really just didn't do too much throughout that time, and then came here first time hitting in a while, and then he popped a blister. Mm. So that's fine. I went to the Garcia. He took BP today, though. though, before the game. Look, he looked good. Um, it didn't look like his hand was bothering him too much. He kind of had a couple band-aids over it and taped it up. So. Look forward to seeing him in action. Yeah. As we come down. The second half stretch. 0-2 oh to the Garcia. Munoz retiring the first two batters here in this seventh inning. Pitch to Garcia on the way, right towards Hardy. Going to be a ground ball. Bear hands oh it over the goodness, first place <laughs> in time. Boy, Theo. Seventh inning stretch coming up. We got Johnny McHenry. He's going to actually sing the entire Take Me Out to the Ballpark song live for <laughs> us.
Bottom of the seventh here in Spearfish, the Sasquatch trailing 11 day. New pitch on the mound for the Sunfish. It's Pete Weil making his 10th appearance this season. Ninth time on the mound, 21 and two thirds. Pitch a 4.56 ERA, one and two record. Ben Parker fouls off the first pitch. Oh and one, Parker 0 for 2, a pair of walks here tonight, one run. Charles McAdoo and Seth Surrett do up here in the seventh. Parker takes ball one. Sasquatch trailing by three. And Parker takes ball two, gets away from Will Olson. Now, Johnny, you were one of 40 All-Stars on the Sasquatch team. How was the experience up in Casper? That uh, that break was probably one of the most fun experiences I've ever had um, playing baseball. Uh, the home run derby was extremely entertaining. Um, it also helped that the representative from the Clark Division won it, uh, that, so that got us all excited and pumped up. And then going into the All-Star game, we had a little banquet lunch, which was a fun experience hearing a couple uh, speakers talk. And then the game itself was the funnest game that I've ever played. Yeah. It was just a good group of guys and um, just, yeah, fun all around. It also helps that I was able to get a knock and make a couple cool plays while I was at it. So it was just a good experience. Yeah, very instrumental in that 5-3 comeback. As Charles McAdoo takes strike one. Ben Parker, a single. One of those flare out, flare foul, fair fly balls. There we go, third time. Oh, there the it is. We've seen a few of those tonight from both teams. And McAdoo has been quiet. 0 for 2 with a pair of walks as well. Takes strike two from Pete Weil. Let's get a little sinker. Wow, Richard freshman at North Georgia University from Hotlanta, six foot two freshman lefty. McAdoo mm, in the right field, yeah. that's just foul. Yeah, I don't know, I mean, we're down three right now, but I would not take us out of this game yet. Uh, I feel like we've been in this situation many times, clawing our way back. A few times. Yeah, maybe not many, a few times. Oh, and to the McAdoo. Again, a foul ball to right field. This one a little bit higher, but out of play. It must be a, a lot of fun playing on a team that leads the league and, and runs and one of the best, off, highest batting average coming in 317. Yeah. Um. You can put some money on it that we're probably going to put up some runs every game. Garcia, late throw. Parker is safe. I'm sorry, Cricket Danielson at second base. Yeah, I mean, you look at our lineup top to bottom every night. Um, we have a lot of hitters on that on that lineup. Pretty much one through nine. So that makes it fun. I mean, you look at this lineup here tonight. So you got... Hardy batting 300, Parker batting forward, and Mack 300, Surratt over 300, Crossley has six home runs this year, I believe, Driggs over 300, Ninnis over 300, and then Brian Bachman, who's just below 300. Your lowest hitter is batting and even, 260. Yeah, I mean, Bachman is similar to Riley. He's just a tough out. You know he's going to get deep in the counts, and he's always going to give you a good at bat. Yeah. So Parker on second, McAdoo on first, Sefs are at the tying run at the plate. Winds died down a little bit, still blowing out of this ballpark left to right. Surrett 0 for 4 tonight. He takes ball two. Has there any has there ever been a, a, a day where Surrett's not arguing about some take he's had in the dugout? Um I I can't say that there has been. No, I think every day there's something. And it's always something new, too, which is pretty impressive. Like, Ball his arguments don't also. carry over to the next day. It's always just 
he comes up with someone talking to JMO about it, and then it just develops. I think Will Raleigh said yesterday, I <laughs> told him, you have the worst takes, and Surratt said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's pretty proud of <laughs> what he has to say. He's pretty proud of his takes, especially his Clayton Kershaw one. So if you hadn't heard, Surratt said 20 at bats against Kershaw, he would get a couple hits off him. What do you think? Yeah, no, I agree. I think that's that's actually a fairly decent take. I think you can kind of say that for a few MLB pitchers. Um, I'm not saying he would rake off of Kershaw, but I think a couple hits could go in Seth's way. So Surrett walks. Now, base is loaded. Johnny, if you haven't been here tonight before, Sasquatch had the bases loaded four times. Three, a three of those times, runners were left stranded. No outs on the board. Matt Crossley at the plate. Now we have you up in here in the booth, so maybe you're going to change the juju up here. Yeah, we put up one last inning, so. Crossley three for four tonight. Ooh, he takes strike one. What are you seeing from Pete Wilde, the sunfish pitcher? Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, that pitch looked pretty, pretty good. A little slider. Started in the middle of the plate and just fell right off. Crossed it with a double and two singles, RBI and two runs tonight. And there, there's that little two seam or sinker, whatever, whatever you want to call it. That look, yeah, he can run it up there. So tying run at first base, Crossley, the go ahead run. Seven home runs this year. Sixteen extra base hits now. Nineteen after his double in the third. Behind 0-2. In yeah, the right there field, there's a base hit. Parker will score. McAdoo around third. Here's the throw from Thompson. Yeah, Not in fast. time. Too fast. Surrett safe at second. A two-run single for Matt Crossley. And just like that, it's a one-run game. Johnny McHenry breaking the bases loaded curse by coming up here in the booth. Congratulations, Johnny. I just do what I can to help this team out. So Crossley at first, Surrett to second. And now Hayden Driggs at the play. I have the three hit night. Bouncing back, struggled after his outstanding series in Fremont, hit two home runs on Saturday, but the past two games against Gear. Mm -hmm. Corner, corner pitch is good pitch. He went 0 for 8, but bounced back four hits today. Speaking of hits, 3 for 4 last night, John. He went 2 for 3 on Monday, including a home run that still hasn't landed. Yeah. Well, I think it's safe to say that one's touched ground now. <laughs> Drake just recently, recently. Drake's showing bunt, pulls back. Coach Mona giving the signs. Now, Coach Andrew Pratt's 4-1 and as the head coach of the Sasquatch. Yeah, I know. Good for Pratt. He, uh, oh, no. Good bunt. Oh, good. For the first for one. Wow, had a chance to throw the second. Just went for the safe play. It's kind of funny, too, because Pratt doesn't give any signs at third. He just kind of lets us play, and I Whereas guess it works out. Coach Mono's more hands-on or more in instructive. Yeah. I wouldn't say controlling, but definitely likes to be more in touch with what goes on. So now Gage Ennis at the plate. Tying run on third. Go-ahead run at second. Check swing. That's in for strike one. Minutes two for four tonight. Back to back singles is thrown out, trying to take second base in the sixth. Let's see what he can do here tonight. Just his second multi hit game of the season, despite having a hit in every single game he's played in. Fouls off the 0 1 pitch. 0 2. 
Ryan Bachman on deck for the Sasquatch. Two runs here in the seven. They scored five runs unanswered after 11 put up by Sioux Falls. Go two from Weil. And then this takes ball one. And I told you at the beginning of this inning, said don't count us out yet. Clairvoyant Johnny. Huh? Clairvoyant Johnny. You're a predictor of the future. Yeah. One, two. Oh, yeah. Just fouls that one off, one, two. So one down still. Looking over at second. Now the pitch and outside two and two. So Cam, you excited to meet your presidents tomorrow at Mount Rushmore? Possibly. <laughs> Have they constructed you as the fifth base on Mount Rushmore? Uh, I heard there was talks. I don't know. They're in negotiations right now. Ah, uh, okay. That's a yeah. Pitch inside three two. So you've been three times, right? Yeah. Can you name all four presidents? So it's George. George Washington. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got Teddy Roosevelt. We got Lincoln. And then you got Thomas Jefferson. Look at you. You sure Benjamin Franklin's not on it? Mm, you know, I think, like I said, they're talking about me right now. <laughs> I heard Benny's next. So 3-2 three, two three, two count, and it's absolutely grinding out this at bat. First base is open, one out. Payoff pitch from Weil. Nennis in the right field, this is another foul ball. Good at bat right here. Making Weil work for it. Sioux Falls already short on pitchers. Had Declan Beers came in for an inning. Did a good job, only three hits, one run across. Can't ask for more for a infielder who hasn't pitched during college this year. 3-2 again. Dennis goes down swinging. Big strikeout there for Pete Weil. That's his first one and now two outs. So Ryan Bachman at the plate, two for three. The night had a walk in the sixth. One strikeout. So the two outs obviously takes away the chance for a sacrifice fly. So you're in Bachman's shoes here. What are you looking to do at this at bat? Besides obviously bring home the two runners on base. So with two outs, runners on second and third, it makes it a little different than second and third with less than two outs. Um, here, like obviously, like you said, you're just kind of trying to get a base hit now. Because if there's less than two, you're just trying to put a ball deep in the outfield and allow Seth to tag up and score. So here, your approach here is just obviously still looking for your pitch. You're not trying to chase anything. You don't have to be protective. But um, if you can put a ball hard through a gap somewhere, obviously that's your best case scenario. So just, yeah, looking for pitches that you can hit hard. Does have two base hits for the night. And especially with Bachman being in the nine hole, um, kind of that next man up approach. Any way you can get Theo up, um, extending the inning, trying to get Wiles pitch count up here. Strike one in the Bachman, one one count.
Sets and delivers. Bachman, big swing. One and two now. It's like a little slider in the dirt. It's a good pitch. Sasquatch trailing by one run. That tied runs at third. The go ahead runs at second. Two outs on the board. Pete Weil has Bachman in a one two count. Big pitch on the way from Weil. And mm -hmm. Bachman takes ball two. So 2 2 count. Two until you th are you expecting a slider here? He went fastball away, so yeah, I'd either go with that slider low and like maybe try to put it in the dirt, uh, see if he won't chase that again, or maybe just throw it off the plate. Two-two pitch, Bachman Fastball, up the, the middle. middle that gets through. Surrett will score. Here comes Crossley, the throw to the plate, not in time. Yeah. The Sasquatch take the lead. Well, he went with the fastball instead of the slider. That worked out well for us. Ryan Bachman, his third hit. You gotta love it. It was 11 to five at one point. Good for Bachman too, you just love to see that stuff happen. Rapid City's finest. <laughs> yeah. He is from Rapid City, everybody. Yeah, in case you didn't know. We're spreading the word out. So Bachman on first, still two out, Steel Hardy at the plate. Pitch inside. Well, it was a 11 to five at one point. Will Olsen had just hit a grand slam. The energy in the stadium had been sucked out. But Sasquatch Scrappy, two runs in the fifth, one in the sixth, and then four here in the seventh. Artie takes ball two. Yeah, I'm starting to get <laughs> whiffs of playoffs, Johnny. Yeah, I know. Fremont, Something's cooking. Fremont did win tonight, so if this score holds, Sasquatch win, it would st they'll still you guys will still be one game back. Sioux Falls will four, fall the four games back. So if we win tonight, so be one basically game back. just us and Fremont kind of in the running? Potentially. Still, so Sioux Falls would fall the four games back, but ten games left. And with so many players leaving these teams, you, have, you know, who knows what could happen in the final week. Yeah, I heard Sears Valley had a bunch of guys leave their team yeah. as well. And so. they're coming here Friday, but they're on a four-game win streak. Oh, no. oh, Theo. Are you the right field? Going back is Thompson, and that does it. But Spearfish gets the four runs they needed. They're in front 12 to 11. Courtesy of the Rapid City native. Ryan Bachman, of course, Johnny McHenry up here in the booth. Who knows what would have happened if you didn't come up? You know, like I said, do whatever I can to help this team out. Two innings left. We'll be right back here in the Sasquatch Network.
Yeah, it will. It is. First pitch to Mitch Stroh in for strike one. Sebastian Munoz on the mound here. This is a third inning so far. Just one hit allowed. One strikeout went one, two, three in the seventh. Now facing the heart of this Sunfish lineup. They trail by one run. 14 hits to the 13 hits from the Sasquatch, but trail by one here. Had that seven run inning in the second, four runs in the fourth. Now gonna have to come from behind for a second time tonight. Trying to keep themselves in this playoff battle. 0-2 now for Munoz, inside for ball one. So, so it sounds like we're facing that uh, Garcia pitcher on their team tomorrow. He's one of the better pitchers that we faced this year. So we'll see how we can fare against him tomorrow. I believe he was throwing low 90s the last time you guys faced him. Yeah, he, w he was sitting around 92, 94, ni 91, 93, I'd say. Is that the fastest you faced so far this year? Yeah, he's he's been the fastest. Um, and obviously coming from California to Juco, we don't see much of, we see a few guys touching nines, but uh, it's pretty rare there. So it's fun to see that coming here and playing. Two and two. Stro check swing. Ooh. Umpire called ball. First base umpire agrees with that call. Full count now. Hayden Drix was ready for strike three. Yeah, his last start, Andrew Garcia went seven innings, gave up just one run through seven. Four hits total. That was in that 10 to 5 victory. John, you went. 0 for 3 against him. And Stroh being in the back, and that'll be a hit batter. No, sorry, Johnny. You went 0 for 3. You had two hits, one off Cricket Danielson, who's playing at second base, and he walked against JT Mix, I believe. Well, I guess I just got to go get him tomorrow then. Yep. So Munoz, his night is done. Going the pin. And it's Jack Fan on the lefty coming out. We'll be right back. So Jack Van Dorn coming in 
for Sebastian Munoz here. Runner on first, no outs. He's facing Norris McClure, who's one for four here tonight. Six foot four lefty. First pitch slowing away for ball one. It was fun to have the band out here tonight. That was a good little uh, unique thing that it we was. had. I enjoyed when they were playing the uh, take him out to the ballpark song right behind home plate so the opposing pitcher yeah, couldn't warm know, up. Strategy, a little strategy. Get in their head. Anything you can to win. One and one from Van Doren. It's always fun having live music at a game. Have you ever been to a, a athletic event with a live organ? Yeah. Uh, the Giants, the San Francisco Giants do it, and I've yeah. been to some of their games. So yeah, it's pretty cool to hear. He's, he's pretty good at it, too. One on one. We actually had a fan ask us if we had a live organ player at one point. Yeah, this we do. Season. We do, yeah. <laughs> well, um, clearly. Getting behind the catcher before that inning worked out for us. Yeah, for Our strategy <laughs> paid off. <laughs> Four runs in the bottom of the seventh. <laughs> one on one from Van Dorn. Ooh. Big swing there. I would not want to be a lefty facing Jack. He's really just turned it on. He had a, he had a tough first start, but ever since then, he's pitched very well. and. Honestly, if not for that first start, I think he would have been an all-star. Yeah, I, th I was just going to say that. I think if you kind of eliminate his first couple weeks, he was definitely going to be an all-star bid. So McClure behind one and two this account. Appearance number 17 for Van Dorn. ERA 4.09 in 33 innings pitched. Two and two now. So between Van Doren, Kreeth, and Kirkpatrick, who's the one pitcher you would absolutely not want to face? Well, that's a tough one. Being a switch hitter, so I can hit from both sides, so we have Z Jack and... Oh, you're a switch hitter? Oh, okay. Yeah, I am. Okay. So we have Jack and Riley, so I'd hit righty there, but they're both... They both have their own, like, specialties. And then hitting lefty off of uh, Kreeth. I don't know. That's a pretty tough decision. I'll have to get back to you on that one. Okay. I've never thought of that. But, yeah, Kreeth... It's pretty disgusting. That slider he has is probably one of the best pitches I've ever seen. And he mixes it up too well to where every time you watch Kree throw against the batter, they look lost. Two, two Hayden Driggs calls time to come out. I guess I would just have to choose Kirkpatrick then because uh, s since Jack has the sidearm action, I don't see that very often from the right side. And then Kreeth is just, I don't know, he seems pretty intimidating up there. So Does it take a, an app batter to kind of get used to a sidearm thrower? or it, A guy like Jack, yes, just because he's lefty and sidearm, and so those are pretty and rare. And six foot four. Right, and so he's just kind of slinging it. Um, Kirkpatrick throws over the top, so it's more common to see him. So he's just a dominant lefty pitcher. And then, like I said, Kreeth is just, you know, Kreeth. Two to the McClure. He throws that one. Good at bat here from Norris McClure. First batter. Yeah, once we see, uh, when we're playing in the field, and once I see Riley getting warmed up in about the seventh, I know Crete's going to follow him in the ninth. So once we see uh, Riley getting warmed up, it's time to pack up the bags for the other team. At least that's how I perceive it. Well, the stats don't lie. Two and two again to McClure, and he goes down swinging. Finally, a long at bat. Van Dorn able to strike him out. I've actually never seen such a that one outing that Riley had. He threw like three innings. I forget what team that was against. Kirkpatrick. Yeah, he almost had like a perfect three innings there. I forget. I don't. Well, let's see. He against the Spuds, he went three innings in only. I think it was at home too. Runner. 
Well, it could have been that one because he, he walked one guy, three strikeouts, three innings. Zero hits, zero runs. Could have been a two at two inning outing as well. Then went three I think it was that one June 28th against the Big Sticks. Two hits, two walks? I don't know. There was one outing, and I was just like, wow, this is pretty impressive. A lot of your pitchers have had pretty impressive outings. As oh, Van Dorn steps picked. off. Ooh, runner caught down the throw to second in time. That's a big throw out. Jack was perfect through three innings the other day, wasn't he? Yeah, he – oof, that was pretty nasty. That went out. And that was um, against the Spuds. He went three innings, no hits, no walks, four strikeouts. Yeah. That's – you know, I'll take it. You can take that. Yeah. Those usually play out pretty well. Do you get do you get bored though, or are you just in awe? No, watching? yeah, you're pretty much. When a guy has an outing like that, you're just kind of standing on defense, like just in awe of what they're about to do to this batter. First pitch outside to Will Olson. Now Olson, the catcher, that grand slam in the fourth, solo shot in the second. What's so impressive about? The, the way he hits, besides just absolutely raking. He's got extremely fast hands, so he gets that barrel to the ball really quick. Like that one home run, that grand slam he hit. I mean, I think that ball was probably a couple balls inside. Um, he just kind of turned on it. I think the wind might have helped him out a little bit on that one, keeping it fair. Yeah, it was but going directly into the wind, which is left yeah. to right. Broken bat there. That gets down for a hit. So a two-out single for the Sunfish. That's the tying run. Yeah, I don't know. Like, like we're kind of saying, with just with Jack Riley and uh, Kreef, it's almost like surprising when guys make contact with them. To yeah. me, at least. Kreef gave up two hits last night in the ninth, and it's like the world was ending. Well, those were like, like some of the luckiest hits I've ever seen too because that one guy just kind of caught that ball right off of his hands. I don't know how he didn't break the bat, which is even more impressive. Kind of flared it into right and then. Wynn was not helping the pitchers. Oh, no, yeah, night. it was pretty tough out there. Oh, one to Tanner Wilson. He's got three hits tonight, three for four, home run, a double, a single. He's all a triple shy of the cycle. Fouls off the 0-1, 0-2. Oh a triple would tie this game up at 12. Seth Hoffpower at first base, or on deck, excuse me. Oh 0-2, two, two outs. What's coming from Van Dorn? What do you think? 0-2. Oh might go back foot slider or a little sinker off the plate. That looks like a sinker off the pl a two seam off the plate. Well, left it down the middle. In the right field. And that's an the out is there. And that ends the top half of the eighth. Sasquatch will bat six outs away from picking up their fourth straight victory. Johnny McHenry, thank you for joining us here up in the booth. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back for Sasquatch Baseball.
Bottom eighth there in Spearfish, the Sasquatch in front. New pitcher on the mound. Dylan Cricket Danielson coming in from second base. JT Mix at second now. Danielson actually pitched against the Sasquatch in that first three game series. Came in that blowout as Raleigh on the ground to shortstop Garcia fills it over the first base in time. Actually pitched one in, he gave up three hits, three runs on that one. One walk, one strikeout. That was in that same game Andrew Garcia started, went seven innings, gave up only one run. And as Johnny McHenry, our infielder, told us on the broadcast last inning, Garcia expected to start tomorrow. So one down, Ben Parker at the plate. One for three tonight. Two runs, a pair of walks, and a strikeout. Takes ball two. Big inning here for the Sasquatch offense. They lead by one. But I'm sure they would love to add some insurance runs, especially against the two-way Dylan Cricket Danielson. 3-0 now. Eight point ten ERA this year. He's pitched in only three games, including point two against the Sasquatch. Parker takes strike one, has to take a step back after heading towards first. Actually, Downson pitched last night against the Pios. One hit, two thirds pitched. And there's the walk for Parker. Three walks for Ben Parker tonight. That's walk number 10 of the game. Now Charles McAdoo at the plate. First pitch down low for ball one. McAdoo, 0 for 3 here tonight. Two walks, two runs. Reese on the E4 in the seventh. That was a part of that four run inning. Put the Sasquatch back in front. 1 out into right field. Thompson reaches back. Six foot seven makes the play. And now two down. That brings up Seth Surrett to the plate. 0 for 4 here tonight. Two runs, a walk. Reach on the E4 in the first. That scored the first two runs of the ball game. Matt Crossley just getting a loose ball behind home plate. First pitch up top for ball one. Two outs here, runner on first. Seth Hopper, Gannon Thompson, Dane Frazier do up in the ninth for the Sunfish. Those three guys have combined for three hits, three walks, and three runs. Good chance they'll be facing Zachary Creeps. Surrett, ground ball right to the glove of Hopper. He's made some phenomenal plays at first base tonight. That ends the eighth. Ninth inning coming up, the money man, Zachary Creep coming in for the save. Sasquatch lead by one.
All right, ninth inning we go. Zachary Creeth on the mound, a 12 to 11 ball game. Sasquatch in front by one. Can Zachary Creeth come in and get the save? He pitched last night against the Trappers, the ninth inning. Gave up two hits, three base runners. First pitch blown away for ball one. Brief 22 games played in this year. 2.67 ERI leads the team with 10 saves. Only behind Dylan Wilhelm and the Tommy Knockers for most in the league. As he faced Seth Hoffpower here now. Hoffpower takes strike one. So Hoffpower one for three here tonight. Had a leadoff, or had, not a leadoff, but had a double in his first at bat. Scored off that, walked in his last plate appearance. Or that double play at the end of the six. Pops one up high into the infield. Still in the hair. Crossley calling for it. Kreef dives out of the way. But Matt Crossley makes the play. That could have been a disaster. But the first baseman coming in the last second. One down. And now Gannon Thompson at the plate. Thompson having a great night so far. Two for four, a double, a single. RBI single in that second inning. Scored one run. Did hit into a double play at the end of that sixth inning. Had a good play out in right field a few minutes ago. First pitch in for strike one from Creep. Creed did pitch against the Sunfish back in that three-game series on June 29th. Got the win, actually, in that come-from-behind 5-4 victory, one and two-thirds. Thompson in the right field. McAdoo going back to the warning track and makes the play for out number two. Thompson knows he almost had that. Would have tied the game up at two instead, two down. And now Dane Frazier coming to the plate. Creed's given up five home runs this year. There's one thing to knock about the saver, the closer, excuse me, not the saver, is that he has given up five homers this year. But two down now, Dane Frazier at the plate. Frazier over two with a pair of walks. First pitch, sign away for ball one. Frazier batting 298 this year, no home runs. 28 hits, five doubles. So 1 0 count. Chris sets, delivers 2 0 now. Two and zero, and now three and zero. So three and zero count here. Tying around at the plate. Dane Frazier's walked twice tonight. Takes ball four there, he'll walk three times. Now the tying run at first, go ahead run at the plate. Just the fourth walk of the game for the Sunfish. Now Dylan Cricket Danielson batting. He was pitching earlier, a half inning. One for five here tonight, one for four. On the ground, the third base, that is foul. So Owen won. A single in his first at bat, scored off of Mitch Stroh's three-run homer. 
but his last three at-bats have been three flyouts. Tying run at first. Go ahead, run at the plate. Now one and one. On deck is Benito Garcia, the leadoff man for the Sunfish. 1-1 one, one, count the cricket, Danielson. One and two, Kreeth one pitch away now. Looking for save number 11, the Sasquatch trilled. 11 to 5 at one point in this game. Have scored seven straight un unanswered runs. Ground ball to third. Bachman has it over the first base in time. The Sasquatch complete the comeback. Zachary Kreef saved number 11. What a comeback victory for the Sasquatch. They keep their playoffs hopes still alive. One game back from the Fremont move. The move won tonight, so this was a critical vic victory. Clark Division pretty tight. The Sunfish now four games back. Could have cut it, or would have kept it at three, but would have been just one back from the Sasquatch. So 12 to 11 is your final score. 13 hits, Sioux Falls with 15 hits. Two more than the Sasquatch, but those four errors is what it's gonna cost them. The Sasquatch improved. To 37 and 17 on the season. 16 and eight in this second half, now 28 at home. On an absolute tier four games in a row now. We'll be hosting Sioux Falls tomorrow again. Should be a great outing. That will be a 635 first pitch. GP Local Post Game Show coming up. We're going to have Ryan Bachman on for a player interview. Ryan Bachman, man, three hits tonight, three for four with a walk, including that two-run single that put the Sasquatch in front. Big piece of hitting. Those were the two runs that got the Sasquatch their win. So we'll be right back with the GP Local Post Game Show. Ryan Bachman here, 12-11 to Sasquatch victory.
Back here on the GP Local post game show, a classic comeback victory for the Sasquatch. 12 to 11, the man who brought in the go ahead run, Ryan Bachman. Great night, three for four, including that two run RBI single. Two outs, runners on second and third, 2 2 count. Tell us about that final at bat. I'm just, I'm, you know, just trying to have a good at bat like I try to do every time, you know, try to see, see the ball deep, try not to chase, and just, you know, try to put a barrel on a ball. You don't want to strike out in that situation. You want to put the ball in play. And, you know, luckily I was able to, you know, hit the ball hard in a place that I weren't, you know, just trying to have, you know, just good grindy two out at bats. Now, you're from Rapid City, right? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, Rapid City's yes, finest sir. right here. Ryan Brockman, who knew? How much fun has the season been being able to play so close to home? You're basically a celebrity here. In <laughs> I, th I think it's the most fun that I've had playing baseball in my life so far. You know, it's such a great group of guys, just such a you know fun atmosphere to play, and to play close to home is really special. And, you know, it, it also helps that we're really, really good. You know, so I think it just a combination of all of that just makes it a really super special experience and one that I'll always be blessed and thankful for. One game back in the playoff race from the Fremont move, a huge victory you're coming from behind by – six runs as you guys gear up for this second half playoff stretch you guys just keep out grinding out wins Absolutely. coming from behind no matter what the score is yeah and i think that's just a credit to the guys that we have you know i think we have guys that want to make the playoffs they're staying they're they're giving up the ends of their summers because they want to make the playoffs and i think that's a really special thing for a summer ball team you don't get that very often and you know we we want it really bad where you see us out here we're competing every out every inning and you know, we're, we're coming for that playoff spot. Also tomorrow making a special uh, appearance. He'll be with Benny Biceps yes, and sir. Johnny Rocket. Tell us Johnny about tomorrow. Uh, yeah, we're just going to go hang out and hang out at the Butte County Fair. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, about 40 minutes and from Spearfish. Yeah, we're going to go hang out at the Butte County Fair, sign some autographs, be, you know, maybe get on some rides. We'll see. I don't know. But it'll be a, it'll be a good day. We're really excited to go out there and meet some people and you know, it'll, be a good, it'll be a really good fun time. Maybe a funnel cake or two? Uh, oh, got to get a funnel cake. Of Perfect. course. Ryan Absolutely. Bachman, thank you for joining us. Sasquatch win 12 to 11, yes, 635. Sir. First pitch against the Sioux Falls Sunfish tomorrow. Thank you for watching the GP Local post game show.